Do we understand what faith is? I know you can turn to the book and the whole chapter deals with faith. But what is faith and where do we stand where faith is concerned? Remember, it was only Jesus that came full of grace and truth. That is not where we were concerned in the history of our people before the Second Testament. Grace and truth came through Jesus. You can call him Jesus Christ if you want, but it came through Jesus. What were we living by before? We were living by our faith. And by our faith, the whole world could be saved. If we understand our faith and how to deal with our faith. Our faith has given us grace so that we can give that. The last time I was here, I read a little bit about what is written in Ephesians, the second chapter. Because everything in this book deals with me and you. Every chapter, every verse, every book. You don't have to write a sermon when you're coming up here. If they're stealing the words, they need to write a sermon. But this book belongs to me like it belongs to you. If you point out to me one Christian in this Bible, I would leave here and I would go somewhere in that book and I think I have five dollars. I would give you my last five dollars. Point out one Christian in this book. And if you can't find any, get to understand what's happening with our lives. I want to tell you something. Listen carefully. This is how it works. And this has nothing to do with my political background or anything. It's facts because it's been proven to be. The more you get people to serve your God, is the more you've been blessed. Abu Bakr, try to get people, convert or die. Today, the Muslims are growing and you can't stop it. Christians, when they enslaved you, you were not supposed to know how to read and write. Just listen to them talking about Jesus. So you get out of that garbage and you steal with Jesus. Jesus is our brethren. He's an Israelite. He's not a God. But you believe because there's no understanding of the teachers of this doctrine because they are not Israelites. Therefore, they cannot understand. I can see a book of Spanish and I wouldn't understand nothing in it. But a Spaniard would. Me being Israelite, I'm supposed to understand what's in there. Because from Genesis to Revelation deals with my people, my blood. My parents, my grandparents, and all that is in it deals with that from Genesis to Revelation. And if we don't feel that pain, we will never be good Israelites. We'll continue to be hitting at each other all the time because we look like strangers to each other. But we're not. We need to understand that we have the same bloodline. I don't care what anybody says. The same bloodline. I don't care how you mix with anything because, the, you know what? Most rebels that have led a lot of revolution about slavery, especially those that I know, my heroes, they never fought against the white man. I want for you to know that. It is a conspiracy all the time for black people to say about a white man. They fought against Christianity. Christianity gave you the cherry tree on your back. Christianity threw you overboard. And who was the Christians? The white man was the Christian. But who was the KKK? He was a Christian. Everybody. 
the, the spirit that moved man, that spiritual force has to be something bigger than a man. And what is it that moved a man to do all the cruel things to the black man? It was Christianity. Whether the man that did it, it was a Christian man that did it. Therefore, the fight should go to the Christian and not to the man. We have to be taught how to hate. We didn't born, come with some sort of a mechanism that automatically we can't like that person or like that person. What happened? We were called animals. We were called coons. We were called blacks. We were called Negroes. We don't have a name. I tell you something. I'm going to go to Psalms 44. We have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work they did in their days in the times of old. How did this drive out the heathen with thine hand and planted them? Now thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither their own arm saved them, but thy right hand and thine arm, and the right of the, and the light of thy countenance, because thou art a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God, command deliverance for Jacob. Now who could say that they are the children of Jacob? Who can say that? When we understand everything about Jacob in Genesis 32 and 35, who can say that all these things at the core is to prove that there's somebody else that is of God and not us? Of course, we're not of God because we don't carry out what God wants us to do. It's like you got a child and the child is wayward, bad, but it's still your child. The God of Israel says, I'm married to you in the book of Jeremiah. He can't separate himself from you. He's a keeper of covenant. We have the creed where the teach of the Gentiles feel so sorry for his people. He cried, broken hearted. I can understand that. That's how many times do I feel that same pain trying so desperately to talk to people so happy and full of joy. I'm sure you've experienced this. To talk to people about your God. Talk to people about the power of knowledge. You understand, why can't they understand? And that's a power within itself. How can't you understand? Look, it's right there. Lamentation 4, 8 said the visage is blacker than a coal. Visage in French means face. How is it that someone can take that and turn it around? Where is the power of your teachings? The power of your knowledge? It's a kingdom of priests, not one person to teach. I said this morning, and I'll repeat it again. We are fully qualified. Those of you who have crossed over are fully qualified. Don't ask me for a program. Oh, I need help. You can do it yourself. And we're equipped that whensoever we shall call upon his name, I know he'll be there to answer based on your life based on your living, based on all the things that has the cure, the substance for true life in Israel.